Sophie, I don't know if you've seen this picture doing the rounds on social media. It's of Jesus dressed as a Hamas terrorist, suggesting that if Jesus was around, he'd be fighting against the Israelis. What's interesting to me is that if anyone dared to draw a picture of Muhammad... 2005, a Danish newspaper published a series of cartoons, some depicting the Prophet Muhammad as a terrorist with a bomb. In response, an Egyptian newspaper reprinted some of the cartoons and called them a continuing insult and a racist bomb. Ambassadors from 10 predominantly Muslim countries also sent complaints to Denmark's prime minister. Months later, a Norwegian newspaper published the cartoon. In response, Saudi Arabia recalled its Danish ambassador, and Libya closed its embassy in Copenhagen. Four months to the day after the cartoons were first published, gunmen attacked the EU's offices in Gaza. The Danish paper apologized. Then papers in France, Germany, Italy, and Spain reprinted the cartoons. Demonstrations erupted across the Middle East. On February 8th, French magazine Charlie Hebdo published the cartoon, alongside other drawings. Then French President Jacques Chirac called the decision overt provocation. Massive demonstrations continued. A leading Iranian newspaper launched a competition asking for submissions of Holocaust cartoons. In 2008, Danish newspapers also republished one of the cartoons. This one day after, police arrested several people suspected of plotting to kill the original cartoonist. Two years later, a knife and axe-wielding intruder entered the Danish cartoonist's house. He was shot by police. And in 2011, Charlie Hebdo's Paris offices were burned after they showed an image of Muhammad on their front cover. The magazine again depicted Muhammad on its cover in 2012, and a cartoon inside the magazine showed Muhammad naked. In response, the magazine was sued and its website was attacked. France closed its embassies in 20 countries. Then, in 2013, Charlie Hebdo released a 65-page illustrated biography of Muhammad. The editor called it perfectly halal. Months later, gunmen waged their deadly attack on the magazine's offices, killing its editor and more than 10 others. What's interesting to me is that if anyone dared to draw a picture of Muhammad, well, you just wouldn't, would you? So it's not only historically inaccurate, and it's not only the appropriation of a religious figure, but just the sheer hypocrisy of it. Oh, look, James, great to be with you tonight. Look, I thought Christmas was off limits. I thought this time of year was pretty sacred uh, and it didn't need to be weaponized like this. I have seen that imagery uh, going around on social media, which I think is really disappointing. And just what you said in your editorial, the goings on uh, in the lead up to Christmas, the weaponizing of Christmas, uh, making this, you know, a, a political game, really, uh, I think is really disgraceful. And it, it should be such a special time for so many people around the world to be putting up these sort of images at this time of year, I think is pretty offensive to a lot of people, James, and it's totally unacceptable, whatever your views are when it comes to religion. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Christmas protests, the fallout from the Carols by Candlelight protest continues, uh, with police now investigating whether or not the anti-Israel activists who get up on stage during the Melbourne Carols performance may have had inside help to get on stage. Now, the Australian newspaper that you write for reported today that insiders have asked why strict control of the event for participants didn't seem to have been applied to the protesters. Sophie, that's a worrying accusation, isn't it? Well, James, let's just be clear here. It's an accusation at this point, so we don't know yet. But uh, I was looking up tonight what you can actually take into the carols. You cannot even take an esky into the carols without getting that stripped off you. There's very tight controls when you go to these events, which a lot of us understand and accept now. You cannot take weapons. Now, uh, one of these uh, people who disrupted the carols that night had some sort of weapon with them but police have not said publicly what it is so i wonder how did they get there on stage uh so close to the host there 
are uh, people will be asking these questions, James. And also the fact that David Campbell, the host, said let them, along the lines of let them have their moment. Is he for real? Wait, it's okay. It's all good. Thank you, everybody. Relax. Settle down. Everyone's allowed to have their, they're allowed to have their moment. They're allowed to have their time. I thought this was really alarming uh, because if this was the Israeli side uh, carrying on like this, I think they would be largely condemned. So let's see what comes of this. But I think it's very concerning if these accusations do come out to be true that there was help. Yeah, well, police are investigating those suggestions and uh, with others calling for more protests and disruptions. Gee, you'd hate to think that events like this will continue to be hijacked. Just on the host of the carols, uh, who you mentioned just a moment ago, uh, David Campbell, um, you're right, he did say uh, everyone needs to have their moment, which was an extraordinary thing to say. And I, I want to show him some grace because, you know, when you're caught in a situation like that on the fly, um, you know, you, you, you react immediately and your words aren't always what you would say on reflection. But I was reminded of the head of ASIO who said just the other week that uh, Palestinian street marches were a pressure release valve um, in the event that something worse might happen. And we continually ask, why do these things happen? You know, you've got kids um, skipping school to protest against Israel. You've got um, all these other protests, motorcades through Jewish areas. We wonder why these things happen. Well, they keep being given permission to happen. If it's not the head of ASIO saying they're a pressure release valve, it's the host of Carol saying, well, everyone deserves their moment. Wait, it's okay. It's all good. Thank you, everybody. Relax. Settle down. Everyone's allowed to have their... They're allowed to have their moment. They're allowed to have their time. You're exactly right, James. Look, David Campbell was in a situation which if you or I are in, I don't know, I can't predict how I would react, but uh, I'm pretty sure if it was the shoe on the other foot, the reaction may have been quite different to this, James. So I think it's really concerning uh, that we're seeing this play out the way it has. And look, it happened during COVID. We saw lockdowns in Victoria. And, yeah. you know, basically when people wanted to march for Black Lives Matter, absolutely fine. If you wanted to protest against the lockdowns, absolutely not. Or Victorians will die. I mean, this is double standards uh, that is just absurd. So I think people can see through this. Uh, and this is obviously such a heated debate. Uh, what is going on overseas? Everyone seems to have a view on it, whether they have knowledge or not. And I think it's really concerning uh, when it seems that one side of the argument is given a bit of, uh, you know, extra leeway here, shall you say. Another comment I wanted to ask you about from the Carol's host, David Campbell. Uh, he told the national television audience during the protest, well, we are in Melbourne, as if that explained the protest. Now, you're a Melbourne girl. What do you think he meant by that? Oh, look, I, I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, try and uh, read his mind, but what is he saying that this is acceptable? Look, some pretty crazy stuff goes on in Melbourne. I don't think Melbourne is the city that it once was. Uh, it's a place a lot of us want to get out of at this time of the year. But lives are at stake. I recognise that many Victorians are doing the right thing and I want to say thank you. But there are some not taking this seriously enough, behaving selfishly and putting lives at risk. Please do the right thing. Follow the rules. Avoid big groups and keep your distance. If you can stay at home, you should stay at home. Do it or Victorians will die. Uh, but when you see things like that unfold at what is meant to be such a special occasion, carols by candlelight, a celebration with very young children, uh, you know, ahead of Christmas, to be trashed like that and trashed on national TV is a disappointment for all, I think. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, no. That microphone has now. That's okay. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. That's okay. We've got... Here it's all good. Everybody, it's okay. It's all good. Thank you, everybody. Relax. Settle down. Everyone's allowed to have their. They're allowed to have their moment. They're allowed to have their time. 
Yes, peaceful protest is a democratic right in this country, and so it should remain. But I take issue with what Nine host David Campbell says there. He was wrong that protesters should be allowed to have a moment when that moment entails terrifying children performing on stage and in the audience. These protesters crossed a line. Those poor children had to be escorted off the stage in a panic. They would have had no idea what was happening. We now know that the woman who stormed the stage has been arrested over the concealment of a controlled weapon, a weapon at a carols event. That's hardly peaceful. But aside from all that, how utterly imbecilic do you have to be to think that the best way to get your message across is to gay crash a Christmas family event? These sorts of guerrilla tactics, as they're being described today, will do nothing but turn people off a cause. It's the type of protesting style favoured by radical climate activists throughout the year who have disrupted commuters and industry, not to mention seriously endangered themselves and wasted police resources by partaking in such Darwin award-winning behaviours, dangling themselves off bridges and cranes. We are now being warned to expect much more such peaceful protests from the pro-Palestinian crowd of the festive period, New Year's Day and Australia Day being singled out in particular. And Australians are jack of it. Was Jesus Palestinian? And while we're at it, was Moses Chinese? I'm joking, of course, everyone knows Moses was Italian. <laughs> But what if Jesus, anti-Israeli protesters, both here in Australia and overseas, have hijacked Christmas to claim that Jesus was not in fact a Jew, but a Palestinian? Check out this graffiti at Bondi Beach on Christmas morning. Jesus was Palestinian, it says. And listen to these protesters disrupting a Santa Claus display at a major shopping centre in Toronto just a few days ago. Now, immediately after October 7, we were told Hamas terrorists were resistance fighters. Then we were told that Osama bin Laden made some really good points. And now we're being told that Jesus was Palestinian. What next? Will they claim Aristotle was Palestinian? Shane Warne? Their argument goes something like this. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Bethlehem is located south of Jerusalem in what is now known as the West Bank. Therefore, they say Jesus was Palestinian. It's only a matter of time before they insist that baby Jesus was wrapped in a kefir and gently laid in a tunnel beneath Gaza, where he was visited by three wise men from Qatar bearing gifts of knives, AK-47s and rockets. I'm joking, but then again, nothing would surprise these days. Attempts to co-opt Jesus to a particular ideology are nothing new, of course. Depending on which social justice warrior you're talking to, Jesus was a socialist, a refugee, a communist, a pacifist, a member of the LGBTQ community, or an environmentally friendly vegan driving an EV with an arms of a hugging sticker on the rear bumper. Oddly enough, activists never describe Jesus as the divine incarnate at whose name every knee must bow. The truth. But we all know the pro-Palestinian mob don't need Jesus to be Lord and Saviour, they just need him to not be a Jew. And so, as the world paused to celebrate Jesus' birth, the Jew haters were insisting a Jew born to the Virgin Mary, also a Jew, whose lineage can be traced back to King David, obviously a Jew, was not in fact a Jew. Catholic priest Father Edward Beck went on CNN and with a straight face said this. A Palestinian Jew born into a time when his country was occupied, right? They can't find a place for her to even give birth, his mother. Mm -hmm. They're homeless. They eventually have to flee as refugees into Egypt, no less. I mean, you can't make up the parallels to our current world situation right now. 
Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. He's totally making it up. Jesus was a Jew, born in the Jewish kingdom of Judea. Palestine didn't exist at the time of Jesus. It was around 100 years after Jesus that Roman Emperor Hadrian purged Judea of Jews and renamed the region Palestine as a slight to the Jews. And you'd think a priest of all people would know that Jesus' disciples were all Jews, that his message can't be understood apart from the Jewish faith, and that at his crucifixion, the Romans hung a sign over his head saying, King of the Jews. But suddenly Jesus is Palestinian? Only queers for Palestine would believe something so outrageous. Using Jesus to justify Hamas, as vandals did to this Boston nativity scene, takes some nerve. It's outrageous and insulting to both Jews and to Christians and to Jesus. If you hate Israel, well then just say so. But attempting to weaponize Christian identity in support of a terrorist organization by claiming that Jesus was not a Jew is deceitful. The fact that Jesus was a Jew doesn't mean he would abandon the Palestinians and it doesn't mean that Christians should abandon the Palestinians either. Jesus taught his followers to seek justice and to love their enemies and that those two objectives were not mutually exclusive. In the current circumstance, it means supporting Israel's right to defend itself and to eliminate the forces of evil, seeking to wipe it from the map, while at the same time mourning the destruction required to accomplish those goals, since Jews and Palestinians are equally made in the image of God. Jesus taught us that, and Jesus was a Jew. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah.